Hi, my name is Randy Umstead. I'm Associate Dean for Academic Affairs in the School of Music, and I'm here to welcome you to our virtual premiere session for music. I work primarily with undergraduate students, and so let me just tell you a little bit about myself. That's what I would do if we were all here for our normal premiere meeting. So I'd tell you first about a few of my favorite things. One of them is teaching at Baylor and working with our fantastic undergraduate students. We find that they're incredibly intelligent. In fact, we have the second highest average test scores of any school in the university, and we're really proud of that. But we also have incredibly talented musicians and really giving people as our students. And I think you'd find them to be wonderful colleagues. Um, by training and by trade, I am a singer. I'm a tenor, uh, which I will not be delving into on this video. Uh, but you can find out more about all of our faculty on our School of Music website and learn about all of their tremendous um, accomplishments, their backgrounds, and why they'd be great teachers and mentors for you if you were to come join us. Uh, what I love most about living in Waco is the fact that we have such a wonderful proximity to all these major cities like Dallas and Houston and Austin and San Antonio, but we don't have to deal with any of the complications of those things. So we have a really small city here, but it's still a city. It has all the nice things that Urban Center does. We got good food, good entertainment, a lot of good things to do, but we don't have to deal with some of the hassles like massive traffic uh, and some of those complications. Waco has really grown tremendously in my 14 years at Baylor, uh, and it's exciting and wonderful place to be. And I mentioned food, and so one of the things I'll tell you about once life returns to normal, um, some of my favorite places to go are some of our restaurants. We have a, a Thai food restaurant called Bangkok Royal uh, that we frequent as often as we possibly can. Um, and we have a lot of other really fabulous places to eat. So next, let me tell you about the mission of the School of Music. We have a very long mission statement that you can find on our website. I'll give you the short version for the purposes of this video. And that's that we're trying to provide transformational experiences that prepare our students for careers inside music and outside music as well. Our students really thrive in this environment. It's a Christian environment that really leads our faculty to nurture and help develop these students and invest heavily in their lives especially in the current circumstance. I know faculty members that have reached out to their students to make sure, do you have what you need? Do you have food? Do you have toilet paper? I've heard of faculty engaging in toilet paper drops, which normally would be an act of vandalism, but here's an act of charity. Um, and that's one of the things I cherish most about this place. We really contribute to the, to the artistic environment of the university. We put on hundreds of musical presentations in a year, from small chamber music concerts to really big, Christmas productions uh, that really enrich the community and help teach our students and refine their musical expression so they can go out into the world and be um, high quality professional musicians and educators. So just to give you a little description of the School of Music, we have roughly 375 students, usually between 360 and 400, of which about 300 are undergraduates and 75 are graduate students. And of those 75 graduate students, probably about 10 of those are doctoral students, the rest are master's students. We have 65 full-time faculty. Uh, so if you're doing your math, that's a exceptionally low student-faculty ratio. And we have about 20, uh, up to 20 supplemental professional adjuncts. Um, so what those numbers tell you is that we're large enough to really be a comprehensive school of music, to have two orchestras and three bands and seven choirs, but we're also small enough and we're undergraduate focused enough that our undergraduates get all of the opportunity or most of the opportunity and a tremendous amount of attention. We're also accredited by the National Association of Schools of Music and we're a member of the Texas Association of Music Schools. So you have those two stamps on the quality of the education that you would get here. So we really are, we're comprehensive. We provide a thorough background of musical training based on history and theory and really practical application in all the various fields of music. And one of the things I'll point out that's unique to us is we have as a major, we have a five course theory sequence and a four course music history sequence. And one of the ways in which that benefits our students is we routinely get phone calls and emails from them when they've headed off to graduate school and say, uh, I, get the, I had this phone call from a student of mine that was at CCM, Dr. Umstead, I don't have to take any music theory or music history while I'm here. I tested out of all of it because of the outstanding teaching and education that I got at Baylor. Um, we offer performance experiences of the highest quality. I hope some of you were at our TMEA performance in February, either the symphonies in the choir one night or our wind ensemble the preceding night. Uh, so you, if you were there, you will have had up close and personal experiences 
with the high quality of, of our performing ensembles. And then we really work hard to engage the intellectual and cultural life of our Baylor community, along with our other arts partners like theater and film and digital media and art and art history. So let me tell you a little bit about the undergraduate degrees that we offer. First, our, our primary degree is our Bachelor of Music degree. That's the one where I think it and our Bachelor of Music Education degrees have the most students in them. So our Bachelor of Music degree, we have majors in applied music, which you might call performance, but that's what you want to do if you want to pursue a career as an oboist or a trumpeter or a singer like me. Um, that's, that's the performance degree. Then we also have a church music degree that's part of our Bachelor of Music degree, majors in composition, music history and literature, music theory, and piano pedagogy, in addition to piano performance. And so that degree really is a professional degree in music. It's about 75% music, 25% general studies, and that really is narrowly focused on those who want to have a career in music uh, as a performer or a teacher, a uh, private teacher. Because then our next degree is a Bachelor of Music Education degree, which is the degree you want if you want to be certified to teach K through 12 in the state of Texas, or perhaps in another state. We offer that in instrumental music and in choral music. And then third, we have a Bachelor of Arts degree, which is technically housed in the College of Arts and Sciences, but we do all of the advising. We work closely with those students. And you can get that either in applied music, which was performance, or academic or church music. Um, but that's what we call a liberal studies degree. So that proportion is about 75 hours um, in music or other fields and 50 hours in general studies. And really the music major component of that is 50 hours. So it's really 50 hours of music, 50 hours of general studies, and 25 hours or 24 hours of other things that you might want to study, another major or a minor. Uh, and that really is for people who are trying to prepare more broadly for a career, maybe music and something else. Next, I want to talk to you a little bit about our secondary major. So our secondary major is available in instrumental performance or keyboard performance, and it allows advanced players who can meet the criteria for acceptance to our performance degree to have the secondary major, which is only about 36 hours. And that really is lessons every semester, it's ensemble experience every semester, it's a senior recital at the end, and a little bit of theory and a little bit of music history. If you're an instrumentalist, there's some chamber music thrown in there too. And it really is for those who want to continue their interest in music performance while they also pursue another academic career path. So it's different from a music major in that the academic music requirements are reduced, but you still have all the same private instruction, uh, participation ensembles and chamber music, and a formal recital at the end of your senior year. Um, and that has become an increasingly popular option for students who maybe want to get an undergraduate degree in engineering. That seems to be a common one, um, or, or biochemistry, and then do music as a secondary major. Because your, your next option down is an academic minor, which is 20 or 21 hours, depending on whether or not you do the music minor or the church music minor. And that really is, it's academically focused and it's there to broaden a student's experience, but really their focus is primarily in something else. No audition is required for the music minor, it's just a matter of declaring it and completing the required courses that are listed in the catalog. Next, I want to tell you about our ensembles. As I mentioned earlier, we have a bunch of them. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven choirs, so I'll start there. We have a cappella choir, which is our top mixed group that has uh, 40 to 50 singers in it. We have chamber singers, which is a smaller, more select group of 16 to 20 voices uh, that's also typically upper class and graduate students. We have concert choir, which is the mixed choir that freshmen and some other students go into and a lot of non-majors go into for their um, mixed choir experience that has usually about 90 singers in it. Then we have women's choir and men's choir, which are predominantly non-music majors and they're gendered choirs, a women's choir and a men's choir, and they each have roughly 100 singers in them. Then we have Virtuoso, which is a highly select pop a cappella group, and Bella Voce, which is another 34, 35, 36 singer select women's group. We have two orchestras, the Baylor Symphony Orchestra, which is our orchestra that performed on TMEA. That's largely majors, also a lot of secondary majors, and a few non-majors participate in that group. And then we have Campus Orchestra, which is a string-only group that's almost exclusively non-majors. Then for bands, we have Wind Ensemble, which is our top group, uh, our, our top wind group. They performed at TMEA. It was a really fabulous concert. I hope you got to hear it. If not, there's probably clips of it somewhere out there on YouTube. 
Um, then symphonic band, which is our second band, a concert band, which is only in the spring to counterbalance marching band in the fall. So one thing I'll be sure to tell you about marching band is it is open to non-majors and the time commitment is nowhere nearly as significant as it has been for you in high school. It's rehearsal Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 4 to 6 p.m., game day on Saturday, one or two road games a year, that's it. And then, of course, the bowl game, if we make a bowl game, or I should say when we make a bowl game at the end of every season. Then courtside players, um, that's a lot of music majors participate in that, but on their second instrument as an opportunity to train that up. But those are the groups that play along with men's and women's basketball and volleyball. We have three jazz ensembles. The top group is the Baylor Jazz Ensemble. Our, um, our next group is the Concert Jazz Ensemble. And then we have a variety of jazz combos. There's a, a robust Wayne Fisher jazz program here at Baylor. And then the ensembles that don't really fit neatly into anything else, you've got Baylor Opera Theater, uh, which is our opera program. They put on one main stage production every year and then two smaller productions. Um, Baylor Bronze, our handbell group, our early music ensemble, which is a really fantastic group that usually has a mixture from all of our different disciplines, string players, keyboardists, singers, <clears throat> and they play in Armstrong Browning Library. And then we've got chamber music built heavily into all of our instrumental music programs. And that's one thing that our instrumental faculty are particularly proud of is how involved in chamber music our undergraduate students are. So now let me tell you a little bit about some of the opportunities that come your way. Uh, one of the big ones that we try to talk up that's really unique to us is something called Semper Pro Musica, which is a competition we have every other year. There's a solo and a chamber music and an organ uh, component to this competition but we hold it every other year and we try to identify the very top talent in the school. So we bring in, we have initial rounds within your own discipline that are judged by your faculty. And then the students that advance from the keyboard area and the voice area and instrumental area, all are evaluated by a panel of outside judges who put together a program of solo and chamber music that's 90 minutes out of the auditionees that have made it to the finals. And then we take those students to Vile Recital Hall in the Carnegie Hall complex every other May, it's in late May, and they get their opportunity to make their Carnegie Hall debut. That's been an exciting program. We've now done it, I think, three times. Every time the place is packed, a lot of Baylor alumni come from the region to come support our students, and we have a grand time, but it is a lifetime memory for all those students who have participated in that. We also bring in a tremendous amount of guest artists to campus because one of the ways that we try to refine our students' musicianship is to expose them to the finest artists there are in the world. So we have a distinguished artist series that brings in really, really major names. So we've had Chanticleer here multiple times, uh, Tenor Lawrence Brownlee, pianist John Nakamatsu, Paul Jacobs on organ, Lynn Harrell on cello. Uh, we, we bring these people in to both perform, but then to interact with our students. And then we have the Lyceum series, which has um, more events each year. And that's really teaching focused. It began at Baylor in 1976 and it's founded by the Meadows Foundation, and it's really an educational effort. So when there are performances associated with it, that's actually the secondary piece. It's really to bring in people to give lectures and master classes uh, to exp expose our students to these, these outside artists. Then if you want to know what it's like to be a music major at Baylor, we encourage you to participate in an event called Bear Shadow. We do this every semester. The next one will be in the fall in November. The one in the spring has already passed. Um, but that's a unique opportunity for prospective music majors to get to know our campus and our students and our facilities. And the prospective students that come will have the opportunity to sit on our music classes, observe ensemble rehearsals, learn more about degree programs. I'm there to answer all of your questions about double majoring and transfer credit, um, and to eat a meal on campus and to spend some time with our students. It's one of the best ways to get to know what it's like to be a music student at Baylor. Um, and we, we hope you will come and participate in that and enjoy it. Um, that music, I should note, is available only for people who are interested in pursuing a music major, um, but we still hope that that's most of the people watching this video. Um, last but not least, I want to give you some contact information uh, because we've had to go through this. Normally in Premiere, there's great question and answer time, which we are not able to do in this format. So please feel free to send me an email at randy, R-A-N-D-Y, underscore umstead, U-M-S-T-E-A-D, at baylor.edu, or you can get a hold of our admissions office at music underscore admit at baylor.edu. And in case, you, in case you have trouble with that information, you can also easily look me up by just looking up at our School of Music webpage, 
Randall Umstead, and you'll find me very quickly. So our webpage, where you can get this information and even more, is www.baylor.edu slash music. Well, thank you for your time. Please reach out if you have any questions, and I hope you learn a lot through Baylor Premier. Thanks. Bye-bye.